So yesterday, our instant water heater here stopped working, and I think I know why. We have a well here, and the island where we live is made of limestone, so I think that our water heater here is plugged up with calcification and mineral buildup. So I'm going to try to clean it out using some vinegar. I'm going to use this portable Milwaukee bilge pump here. This is a, a battery-powered pump. It takes uh, Milwaukee standard 18-volt batteries. So I've got a bunch of them on charge because, as you'll see, this process takes a while. I'm going to use this, this pump in combination with these hoses here and this bucket, and some jugs of vinegar, which I have prepared. This is just regular white pickling vinegar. First of all, I need to shut off the water supply to and from the heater. Over here with these, these turn valves, I'm shutting off the cold water to the water heater with this one, and I'm shutting off the hot water from the water heater with this one. I have these clean out ports here, so the next thing I'm gonna do is, is open these. I'm gonna try with my fingers, but if that doesn't work, Oh, no, it is working. I don't need the channel lock pliers. I have this bowl under here to catch the little bit of water that always comes out. Just give that a few seconds to drain, and then we'll move this over to the other one, the hot water. Now, that one's a little stiffer, or maybe it's just because my fingers are wet, so I will use the channel locks in this case. You always need a good pair of channel lock pliers to run a homestead properly. Now, these ones, the kind without teeth on the jaws because I don't want to mar the surface of this uh, this fitting cap here. I'll just get a grip on that. There we go. Oh. A little more water than I expected. I'm going to grab a towel here. There's always little unexpected twists in jobs like this. Okay, so my wife who's behind the camera, kindly got me a larger bowl because <laughs> there was more water than expected. But there's actually an interesting telltale sign in this water. If you look in this bowl, you can see little bits of calcification and lime scale at the bottom. So the fact that that's already coming out, and I haven't even started to run vinegar through this heater yet, tells me that my hypothesis as to why the heater stopped working yesterday is most likely correct. Okay, so the Water's mostly drained out now. It's just reduced to a slow drip. I'm gonna go ahead to the next step, which involves these hoses here. So for this method of water heater cleaning, I need three hoses. One of them has uh, threads on each end, and two of them have threads on only one end and are cut off on one end. And you'll see where those come into play. I'm gonna take this cap off of the pump here and this, this short hose, which has cut off end on one end and threads on the other, I'm actually gonna thread that on to this end of the pump right here, the inlet end of the pump. Now in this case, I don't want any leaks at all because I'd end up with vinegar on my floor, so I'm gonna just make it a little tighter than finger tight using my channel lock pliers here. Now this hose, is going to be the one that sucks vinegar out of this bucket and into the pump, as you'll see. The next one is going to be this uh, hose here that's a little bit longer and has threads on both ends. I'm going to first thread that one onto the outlet end of the pump. You can see here on the front of the pump there's an arrow to indicate direction of liquid flow. So you don't want to get this backwards, that's for sure. Just tighten that up a little bit more than finger tight, again, using the channel locks here. Okay, now I'm going to take the other end of this, try not to let it get twisted, and I'm going to thread this onto the cold water inlet at the bottom of the water heater. You don't want to do it backwards. You might think, well, why can't you do it to the hot water outlet and feed it through the other way? It probably shouldn't matter, but it actually does matter, at least with this heater, because there's a check valve on the hot water side, so the water can only flow in one direction from there. So if you try to attach this to the hot water side, you just won't get the vinegar flowing properly. Made that mistake before, so always got to do this on the cold water inlet here. And these threads are a little grimy, so it takes a little doing. But... And once again, get it as tight as my fingers can, and then go a little bit tighter with the channel locks. You don't want to over tighten it. You don't want to risk damaging anything. Oh, that was loosening. <laughs> 
Righty tighty lefty loosey, right? There we go. That's good and tight now. So now we attach the final hose from the water heater to the bucket. So we have to suck the vinegar up from the bucket with the pump. The pump pumps it from the bucket through this hose into the heater, down through the heater's innards, and then back out the hot water outlet and back to the bucket. So that's the continuous loop that we're creating. This hose is a little longer than I need for this job. Too long is much better than too short. So we'll thread that one on to the hot water outlet, as I said. It's easy to remember because the handle for the hot water outlet is red, and this hose that I use for this part of it happens to also be red. Just get that finger tight, and then once again, the trusty channel lock pliers. And of course, we want to make sure before we power anything up that we have both ends of the two hoses securely in this bucket. Oh, and one other thing too, I've switched off the water heater here, but just for safety, because you'd never want the water heater to somehow turn on and try to run when you're doing this. So I'm also going to reach back here and unplug it. So now we have four jugs of vinegar here. I'm going to add two of them. To this bucket for the first round of cleaning. Like I said, this is just regular white pickling vinegar, which has very good dissolving capabilities when it comes to lime scale mineral buildup. There we go. So take a good look at that vinegar there. You can see it's clear and transparent right now, other than the foamy bubbles, it looks more or less like water. But in a few minutes after switching this pump on, I expect that it's going to be just completely black with dissolved minerals. And I think it's going to be pretty shocking just how dirty the inside of this heater is. And that's on me. I'm going to put this towel underneath the pump here because the pump is going to be vibrating quite a bit as it runs. And I don't want it to scratch the chair. Double checked our connections. Everything's good. So we're going to go ahead now and switch on the pump. Here we go. So like I said, this red hose is the return hose. So you can see it's bringing the vinegar back after the pump pumps the vinegar up through the water heater. We'll check back in a few minutes and let you take a look at the color difference of the vinegar now versus how it'll be once it's had a chance to dissolve some of the mineral buildup in the heater. So it's been about 15 minutes now and things are not going according to plan. As you can see here, the vinegar hasn't really darkened at all. We just switched off the pump a few minutes ago. It was running for over 10 minutes and the flow rate from the return hose was about like that. It was just a trickle. And normally the vinegar is just gushing out of that hose. One of two things is happening. Either the pump's not working properly or the inside of the heater is really clogged, like more clogged than usual, in which case, <laughs> my bad. Now I'm gonna leave the, the vinegar sitting inside the heater in the hopes that it'll continue to dissolve away any lime scale buildup. Well, it's doing that. I'm going to disconnect the pump from the heater and put the other end of that hose in the bucket. So I'm going to create a continuous loop within the bucket and the pump just to make sure that the pump is actually pumping. Loosen this off. There we go. And direct this end back into the bucket, as I said. And what we should see when I switch this on is a very heavy flow of vinegar coming out of this hose. <laughs> Yes, that's exactly how it should look. What this means is that the pump is not the problem. The water heater is the problem. And what that means is that the water heater is way too clogged and I just left this job way too long and there's too much lime scale buildup. So all I can really do now is let the vinegar continue to do its work and hope that I don't have to get a whole new heater. <laughs> The truth is I should have done this a lot more often. Like I said, it's been a year since I did this. I probably should do it every three or four months. So lesson learned, 
Hopefully I don't have to fork out 1500 bucks or more for a new heater, but we'll check back with you when the vinegar's had a little longer to work and uh, see what happens. I'm gonna hold up the return hose here above the level of the vinegar so we can see if the flow rate increases with time. I think there's more flow than there was. Let that run for a few seconds. Now I'll shut it off. Let the vinegar stop moving and now I'll switch it on again and we'll see if the flow increases and we'll repeat that cycle a few times. The vinegar is getting darker now, you can see that. Hopefully that vinegar continues to darken, ridding us of the disgusting filth inside this heater. So we're having a bit of a tough time here with this particular water heater cleaning job. We've been running the pump periodically on and off with the vinegar in the taller bucket here for a while. And although it's getting somewhat darker, it's not showing the dark grit that we should be seeing after this amount of time. That tells me it's most likely really clogged in there. So we're gonna try vinegar in this second bucket. The second bucket of vinegar is actually hot. We just boiled some in the kettle. Hot vinegar dissolves lime scale faster and better than room temperature vinegar. So we're gonna switch on the pump here and see if this helps. We're getting at least a little bit of flow here. So that's giving us some hope. And the vinegar's darkening pretty quick. I think the warm vinegar might be helping. The flow rate's reducing here. It's kind of fluctuating, more flow and less. And that looks like it's being caused to me by chunks of lime scale buildup inside the heater, breaking loose and moving around. So probably we just have to stay the course here and keep letting the vinegar do its work. And hopefully, as I said, this hotter vinegar does it quicker than than the other stuff. Many hours later here, and I'm still working on this water heater situation. I just tried something that I thought would help, and it didn't, and it resulted in vinegar and water all over the floor here. I must not give up though. Believe it or not, it's been a couple of days since we last checked back with you on this water heater cleaning job. And you can see here in the vinegar bucket that it's finally gotten quite dark. There's a lot of gross sediment in there, dissolved lime scale from the vinegar being pumped through the system off and on repeatedly over the last couple of days. So now I'm gonna run the pump for just a couple more minutes, actually more like just a few seconds, just to make sure nothing else gross comes out of there. And then I'm gonna take off the pump and set up the heater to use again. You can see there's a good volume of vinegar pumping through the heater. I don't see anything else sludgy or lime scaly coming out of there. So I think we're okay to shut this off. The water heater is still filled with vinegar. I'm gonna start by turning off these clean out valves that connect to the hoses I'm using and then turning on the valves that connect the heater to the water system. I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect these hoses on there pretty tight. We got those loosened with the channel lock pliers. We'll just take them off. And then I'm going to put these end caps back on the clean out side of the valves. These can just be finger tight because of course they're not designed to actually stop the flow of liquid. The valves do that. Now we're going to plug the heater back in. But I'm not going to switch it on just yet. We need to purge the vinegar from the heater. We're going to do that here at the laundry sink just because it's the closest. I'm going to turn this on. You're going to see some regular water and then you're going to see the liquid get foamy and white in the bottom of the sink and that means it's vinegar and then it'll turn clear again and that means it's water. You always want to do this before you actually switch the water heater back on and purge any air bubbles as well as you'll see. Occasionally the water will kind of show. Yeah, and there's the vinegar. You see it's foamy. And there's an air bubble. Probably have a couple more of those before all said and done. Yeah, it's really foaming there. Getting all that gunky old vinegar out. And now it's mostly water. The vinegar smell is fading. We'll run it for another few seconds and then 
I'll actually switch on the water heater. So we'll just run the tap for another minute or two to see if the water actually gets hot. I can hear the heater running. That's a good sign. It wasn't running before. And there's no error messages on the screen so far. Yep, I can already start to feel it get warm already. So that is a success. The last thing we need to do is to clean the pump. We don't want to leave vinegar residue inside the pump. Vinegar is acidic and it could eat away at the internal parts of the pump. I've actually had that happen before when I didn't clean it out properly. So definitely don't want that to happen this time. And that's why I have this bucket of clean water ready to go. I'm going to actually run the pump, get the vinegar out and the clean water in a couple of times. But first, I'm going to dump out this gross, dark colored, spent vinegar that came from in the heater. There's no handle on this bucket. We'll just take it outside here. Now we'll clean out the pump and we'll be done this for another three or four months. Okay, so I filled the second bucket, the one that had the spent vinegar with fresh water as well, because as I said, you want to clean out the pump multiple times to make sure there's not a bit of vinegar left inside. So I'm just going to create a continuous loop of water here. The intake hose is already in the first bucket of clean water and this second hose here will function as the outtake hose. So we'll just switch on. And now we'll switch over to the second bucket. That should do it. It's time to disconnect these hoses. A little bit of water might come out, but I've got a towel here. Nope, looks like the uh, hose washer came off. Pop that back in. The other one. A little bit of water spill there. Luckily it's water and not vinegar. The amount of liquid I spill on the floor for one reason or another, every time I do this job is amazing. You'd think after doing it for a number of years that I'd learn all the tricks to avoid this sort of thing, but it hasn't happened yet. Okay, so the hoses are off, the pump's cleaned out. We'll just put these protective caps back on the inlet and outlet sides of the pump and put this pump away for next time. We're done. Water heater is cleaned out and functional again. Now, as I said, I waited a year since the last time I did this. That was obviously way too long. That led to the complications you've seen throughout this video, the low flow rate, the clogging of lime scale that caused the problem in the first place. So I'm going to be doing this more often from now on, probably every three or four months or so. I'm going to set an ongoing alarm on my phone to make sure I don't end up in this mess again. Hopefully you found this video interesting or at least entertaining, watching me bumble along. If you want to see more videos of this sort, DIY and cabin living type of stuff that have been covered by dozens of other YouTube channels doing a better job than this one, then subscribe to our channel, give the video a like, and share it with your friends. Thanks for watching.